So in this situation, we have this guy running outwards on this platform while it's spinning. So we have to be very careful here. This is a tricky problem. Be careful how you interpret the numbers in, and information that they give us. So the question says, starting from rest, the boy runs outwards in the radial direction from the center of the platform with a constant acceleration of 0 0.5. We have to be very careful. This here is not his true acceleration. As this boy runs outwards, this whole circular plate here is going to be rotating. So at some later time, he'll be more outwards and at a different angle. So this acceleration is the acceleration he is creating. This acceleration is really him giving himself more distance away from the starting point. This acceleration is going to be in this outwards direction here. So because of this acceleration, this guy's R is always going to be increasing. So this 0 0.5 here is really the acceleration of the R position of this boy. So since this is a constant, we can take an antiderivative here. If we do the antiderivative of the second derivative, we'll end up with the first derivative. We have a 0 0.5 t for time plus some constant of integration. We've got to figure out this constant using initial conditions. At t is equal to 0, at the very first instant, what is really the velocity that this guy is running with? Well, they say starting from rest. So you know that at time is equal to 0, his speed is 0. So this constant here will be a 0, because that's necessary for my t to equal 0 and my speed to equal a zero. So now I can take the antiderivative of this and I'll end up with r is equal to, we'll do inverse parallel here, 0.25 plus another constant. All right, so we got a Figure this out. The question is, at time is equal to zero, really, where does this guy start running from? And it says that, starting from rest, the boy runs outwards in the radial direction from the center of the platform. So we know that his starting r coordinate is a zero. So again, if I plug in zero in for t and zero for r, c must equal zero for the left-hand side to equal the right-hand side. So that's great. I have a position, velocity, or speed, and acceleration equation for my r coordinate. So even as this thing rotates, at least we'll know all the different r coordinates that this guy has with time. All right, so now that I've really deciphered that piece of information, I'll keep reading. So if the platform is rotating at a constant rate of 0 0.2 radians per second, determine the radial and transverse components of velocity and acceleration of the boy at the instant that time is 3. All right, so I got that my angular velocity of this thing is a constant 0 0.2 radians per second makes it easier that it's a constant speed for us. At least we don't have this thing accelerating like that. And we really want to know my components of V and A at time is equal to 3. So 
we will set up the velocity first. So I'll pretend that at t is equal to 3, I'm here. And since we're rotating this way, really counterclockwise, my direction of increasing angle is counterclockwise, and therefore my transverse axis will be here, and of course my radial axis will be outwards. Yeah, I have no way of knowing exactly where this guy is, or really what the angular orientation of this circle is at that time is equal to 3. Hopefully it won't really matter. I mean, they don't really even tell us what angle, what angular position this disk starts at. I'll just assume everything's at this arbitrary point, and I'll just be very careful and I'll watch out for, for maybe more information that tells us maybe where exactly this guy is, what, it, what angle he's at. Alright, so looking at my transverse component first, well, we know the r. We know the r at this instant of 3 because we have this equation. I can figure out the r coordinate of this guy at whatever time I want. After doing that calculation, we'll get a 2.25. So we got my r. Well, do I know the angular speed of rotation of this circle at the instant that time is 3? Well, I know that that angular speed is constant. It's always going to be a constant 0.2 radians for every second. So my transverse component is going to be 0.45. It'll be meters per second. I'm getting a positive, which means that this component is going to be in my positive transverse axis. Now for my radial component, I need to know what is my instantaneous change in my r coordinate at this time instant? Well, here's all the information I could ever want about that. Looks like as time goes on, the speed of my r coordinate is increasing. So of course I'll plug in 3 in here and we'll figure that out at this instant. So my radial component of my velocity is going to be 1.5 meters per second. And this is positive, which means that this component is going to be in the positive radial direction. So we have the speed due to this guy running. That's giving him some speed. We have the speed of this guy due to the wheel spinning. So of course I can use Pythagorean theorem my tip to tail vector addition to figure out my true speed. We'll get a 1.57 meters per second. So this is the true speed with which this guy's body is moving. It's the combination of the disc rotating and him trying to run away from that center. So I have my acceleration in terms of radial and transverse components. I'll start with my transverse component. I know the r coordinate of the sky at our instant. The angular acceleration, that is to say the change in our angular speed with time at this moment of 3. Well they told us that this circle is spinning with the constant speed. It's not speeding up or slowing down. It's just moving constantly. So therefore, my angular acceleration is going to be a zero. Now the rate of change of my radius at this instant. Well, we know that. That's a 1.5. Of course, we know that constant angular speed is a 0 0.2. So I can plug in all these numbers. And we'll get a 0 0.6, and this is a part of acceleration, so this will be meters per second squared. 
As for my radial component, what is the second derivative of my r? What is my acceleration of r, you might say? Well, this is going to be a constant 0.5 here. It never changes. I don't see a, a time variable or anything else to make this thing a variable. So we got that. We know the r at the instant in question, and we know that the angular speed is that constant 0.2. So we're all good here. And we'll get a 0 0.41 meters per second squared. So I'm getting positive numbers for both of these acceleration components. So both of these components are going to be directed in their positive axes. And of course I'll add them up to get my true acceleration of this guy, whose magnitude we can figure out using Pythagorean theorem. So we have the transverse and radial components of our velocity, the transverse and radial components of our acceleration. It was a bit of a tricky problem in the beginning, just deciphering this 0.5 acceleration. So, hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments.